I'm excited about that. But yo, today is not about coffee. Today is about, well, it's always about coffee. But today is about um, Perio, man. I think we're going to get some gems out of this kid. 16 years old, making six figures. That is insane. If I was making six figures at 16, I would probably be a billionaire by now. 60K subs on YouTube. Let's go to his YouTube channel. Uh, I want this one to be... I want this one to be really interactive. So that's why we got the Zoom link in the description. So guys, go ahead and start tapping into the Zoom. I think there's already a couple of you guys in here. Um, I want some people to come in and ask some really good questions. Maybe we could do some YouTube channel critiques, um, kind of like how we did with Pale. Um, you know, what I mean, we'll we'll pull your we'll pull your YouTube up in the screen share and have Perio give some um, feedback on you know your your titling, your keywords, your thumbnails. You know, I got VidIQ installed, so we'll be able to see everything. Um, yeah, so I think it's gonna be dope. Go ahead and click the link in the description if you guys want to tap in and um, do the live Q and A. So we're gonna definitely um you know I got some questions for Perio. We're gonna get his story um, and kind of just hear about his come up on YouTube. But like I said, I want this one to be really interactive. Um, let's 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 uh, ask some good questions. Let's see what's going on in the chat. A producer grinder would be fired. Yeah. What do you mean, like a weed grinder or a coffee grinder? I just got a coffee grinder too, by the way. I've been literally um, grinding my coffee beans every morning. Uh, Prison, what up, bro? Leno said both facts, right? All right, man. Let's. Uh, this is Perio's uh, Beat Stars too. 1.2k followers only 206k plays which is crazy like you would think you need millions of plays to uh to make six figures so you know that should i think that should be encouragement right there like yo i don't even need to have a crazy amount of plays uh let's see what he's doing here uh his bulk deals nothing crazy buy two get one free he's not doing buy one get 60 free um whole bunch of beats and he doesn't have an actual like uh, pro page. It doesn't look like. Maybe I'll, I'll ask. Maybe because I know sometimes it's weird. It says he's here in Atlanta. I gotta talk to him. All right, man. Let's bring him in. Let's blow up the chat, man. Let's get some get some hundred emojis. Get some fire emojis. Get some uh, gas emojis. Get some money bag emojis. Buy one, buy one, get my whole cat. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, where is he at? This Chico said, buy one, get my whole catalog free head ass. <laughs> Yo, what's good, bro? Yo, yo, what up, bro? What's good? You, you can hear me, right? Yes, sir. We can hear you, man. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, hey, sir. both people. Hey, we're both in the Zoom call with the with the professional mics. Let's go. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perio, man. What? Welcome to the morning show, bro. Um, I was just telling the the guys, you know, it's real inspiring, bro. I know you just turned 16, right? Yes, sir. Dope, yeah. dope, man. Making six figures at 15, selling beats online. That's insane, man. Uh, You're here in Atlanta, it says? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm like like 15 20 minutes out from the city so i usually just like let people know i'm from atlanta because like i'm easily able to go there that's fire yeah i mean shit 15 minutes that's atlanta that's that's dope though bro um you know we're based in atlanta too uh yeah but um but yeah bro let's uh let's get it started man um i know your your come up story is gonna be a little bit shorter because you know you're just getting started it's not like you're like yeah. a 27 year old out here that's got uh you know crazy um long time in this but uh how like how long ago did you start making beats i guess we'll just start there yeah so i mean just even since i was like li little kid like like on some like elementary school type shit like i've always just like loved music like i always i remember when i was like really really young like i i used to wonder like with when i had like all my friends i was like why are these people like not as into music and like with like the more like technical parts of songs and stuff. Cause I used to just like sit down in my room and like just listen to music like all the time. And I've just always loved it. And- uh, You never played I mean, an instrument I, or anything? So yeah, no. So when I was about like, I'd like to say like six or seven, uh, I I uh, got 
my my grandpa actually for for Christmas just out of the blue like I had no musical like past of playing instrument just out of the blue the dude he bought me piano and then I remember that day like my family set it up and I was like so excited and I I just started like playing songs and I like I didn't have any sheet music or anything so like I learned from there that like I was able to play by ear and everything so like I don't really need the like I didn't I didn't need to read sheet music or any of that kind of stuff so from there I've just always like I've been playing the piano for a long time and uh everything I make is dedicated to my grandpa because for real if I never if he never did that then I don't know I don't know if I would have gotten into music even more like I did but shout out to grandpa but, man a, a real one yeah um but yeah I uh I've just always been really into music in general but I'd say I downloaded FL Studio and started actually making beats uh for real bro it wasn't even a super long time ago I mean I, I'd say it was like like mid 2018 for real i remember just seeing uh i, I used to be some weird kid man <laughs> I, <laughs> in like in middle school i would just listen to tight beats like not to rap to i would just like listen to them like before like, you made I, beats yeah i just listen to them and so like i i already knew when i started like a bunch of uh a bunch of youtube producers i was just familiar with the game because i just listened to them i don't know why i just i <laughs> That's, that's how it was, I guess. And so I started making beats like like mid-2018. And I, I just got like addicted to FL Studio. And like that's the thing I, I always hear you saying, like it's an obsession. And that's that's true, bro. It's really it's really what it's all about. Like you gotta wake up man. on it. Yeah. Who uh so what, what kind of artists and stuff uh, were you listening to like growing up? So I was I I grew up like really listening to a lot of like EDMs type stuff and like so I think that a lot of my like melodies and stuff have, are really influenced by like uh you know that that kind of whole vibe and uh when I you know started getting into like middle school high school I I started to get into hip hop and that's when I kind of made a transition to um to start making beats and stuff because I thought it was it was just cool so I started doing it I still remember the first time I opened FL Studio I was just like what am I looking at? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, it's uh, it's crazy. But yeah, ever since that, I just been making beats every day, just grinding, I guess. And I, I mean, I started uploading on YouTube, I'd say like October 2018. And I, I probably started daily uploading like right when I started. And I mm -hmm. think that's the thing that kills off so many of the smaller producers that want to try and get into YouTube is they, they expect like unrealistic ex ex uh, results almost. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'll get a lot of DMs that'll say like, yo, like what are, what are the best ways to like, you know, get recognition on YouTube and like really these, I'll always make sure to say like, so how long have you been like doing this? And they, right, uh, right. and, and they, they always say like, well, like a month or two. And it's like, you gotta, you really gotta keep going. Like you gotta, I say the same thing. Like you gotta be prepared to like keep pushing through getting no recognition, like as, an, as annoying as it is and like as unmotivating it can be like, you really just got to keep going for real. Man, I, I want to stop you for a second because I want everyone to take this in. Like, you're probably the sixth or seventh successful YouTube producer that we've had, you know, on the show. Every single one of you guys has said consistency, pushing through, no numbers. Like, I don't stop. Like, anyone that's looking for shortcuts and, and has, has seen all these episodes, you need to stop right now. There is no shortcuts. It's literally just consistency putting in the work so when you first started were you you were uploading every day or did it take you a while to realize that's what you had to do yeah so for the first like i'd say like few months i pretty much uploaded every day and then like maybe i wouldn't upload like one day of the week or something i mean okay. a lot of those beats are gone bro because those are sorry those are just not you know i don't know if you want to listen to those, those oh like old you, ones, but, are they still up but, there oh uh, yeah some of them yeah. are but like back back when i would upload every day like right when i started a lot of those beats are no longer available so how long just, were you making beats before you actually started uploading so, I mean, I've always just been into YouTube. Like, I used to make these weird little, like, videos when I was even, like, way younger and, and stuff. It's like, I I, try, I thought I was a vlogger or something. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what that's all about. But, yeah, so I always, like, when I started making beats, my first thought in my head was, like, YouTube. And so I literally, I, I would say, like, a week after, not even. And that's kind of obviously bad because that means I didn't work on my craft at all. And obviously that that shows because but at the at the same time though so i've heard i've heard mixed opinions on this and i think that i don't think there's really anything wrong with immediately starting to upload to youtube because it's like that could have been the thing that like kept you going 
They're like, yo, I put yeah. it up and just seeing the numbers increase, seeing the feedback and stuff like could inspire you to be like, all right, now I got to do another one. I'm going to, I'm going to put another one up. Um, I yeah. think maybe, maybe uploading a week after starting to make, make beats and think that you're going to be amazing and think that you're going to start getting sales. That's unrealistic, but I don't think there's really anything wrong with, uh, you know, immediately uploading like, you know, that don't hurt. Yeah, no, I, that was definitely the thing for me. I wanted to like immediately get to it. Cause I just, I'm in love with the whole process of like, just, just the process pretty much in general, just of like getting more views, getting and just growing all, all around. And, uh, yeah, so like when I really did start getting recognition, that's it all was just amazing to me because it just meant so much to me. I'm like how do, how dope that is for real. Most definitely. So shit, you started in fall of 2018. Were you immediately uploading to Beat Stars, or did you? Were, how, when did that come? Yeah, from? I had a fr I had a friend that was a uh, really familiar. I think he's a mod in this Mikey Beats. Uh, I had a friend. Uh, he uh he was he's been into making beats for a while too, and I was like, yo, what is like I I I had like heard of Beat Stars. And uh, I, he kind of showed me about it. And, like, I was like, man, I don't want to buy this, like, premium BeatStars thing. Uh, like, yeah. I don't want to buy it. And then, but I don't know. I, I bought it, like, in with the with the confidence, like, I'm going to make this back, like, from BeatStars. I want to make this money back that I paid for BeatStars from it. And, uh, I mean, it ended up happening and everything. And so, uh, yeah, I immediately was trying to put everything up in BeatStars and everything. Yeah, all, all that stuff. How long until you got your first sale? Uh, I think I got my first sale. Oh, I still remember it. So February 2019. So that's like, that's a while, bro. For real. Like that's like what, like five, six months until yeah. I got my first sale. So I mean, that's that's another thing that people are always asking me, like, bro, why haven't I got my first sale yet? And it's like, you know, it's all about like, because people, I feel like people get demotivated when they're like, well, well, shit, my beat only has like 50 views, but that's still 50 people, bro. Like you never know, you really never know like who's watching and who's doing what with your beat. That could be a whole five different artists and that's five different studios wherever you know just they're cooking to your beat so you never know i think it's underestimated who's watching because uh you know you never know who's watching so i mean yeah it took me a while to make my first sale and i still remember that's like still one of the best moments of my whole career because like it, it's that's what really gets you your first confidence like wow like i'm getting paid for this like that's right like someone crazy. took out their credit card typed in the number and wanted to buy some shit i made yeah that's that was crazy to me i was like no way like so let's talk about like um the tight beats i know you do like um uh, i know recently i've seen like a lot of juice world and trippy red type beats yeah um like what was your whole did you have a strategy on artists or when you first started so when i first started i just Obviously, I first off like wanted to make stuff that I liked, and when I really started getting into like hip hop music and beats, that was when like Juice World and Nick Mira took off, and so that was like one of my main inspirations for all this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I I uh, I, I just started kind of making that whole entire like melodic, uh, maybe sometimes even like emotional kind of stuff, just because that's what I was just into at the time, and then I just worked on it and more and more to kind of perfect it, and now. Uh, yeah, I, I still make a lot of those beats and I ended up, you know, I, I experimented a lot when my channel was smaller. So I probably have one of the weirdest come ups on YouTube, bro. Like if you look at my most viewed beats, bro, like there's they'll, they'll, there's gonna you're going to see like a lo fi beat. Yeah, I saw the lo fi like, one. I was like, oh, yeah, there's, shit. Like, there's like a lo fi beat. There's like a ski mask type beat. There's a, like a bro. There's a damn country type beat. Like I did <laughs> all this random shit. And it's I, that I used to be like insecure about that stuff because I'm like, well, damn, I want to be making like this kind of stuff. I don't want people to come on my channel and be like, why is this kid making all sorts of stuff? And I, I used to stress yeah. about that, but it's really. It's and I've heard, I've heard some producers say that, like they try to stick with one lane because they don't want their customers to be like, oh, well, I'm, I came here looking for these type beats and he's all over the yeah, place. No, kind of thing. Staying with one lane is definitely a good idea because I've seen I, I, I've seen a few producers. They'll have one channel like like out like, for example, I would keep mine mainly for like Juice World, Trippy Reds type stuff. And if I really wanted to start making like hard, like like NLE chopper, like simple type stuff, then I can go make another channel just for oh, that. Oh, you would and actually I, make a whole new channel? Yeah, no, I've seen people do that. It sounds crazy, but I know one of my guys that's a, it's another YouTube producer, uh, what was it, Nico. He has two different channels and one of them is strictly for, for uh, NLE type beats and it has like 70K. And then another one is strictly for like guitar juice world type beats has mm -hmm. like 40K. So this dude, and, and all of them are linked to the same beat star. So that dude is making guap. Because he's getting two separate channels that are both popping, flowing to the same B stars. Damn. So, 
That's interesting. That's that's something we never really talked about on the show. Actually, having two, it's but crazy. you know, it might actually it, it probably benefits because like YouTube algorithm, you know, what I mean, because if you got subscribers that are coming to you for NLE beats and they they want nothing to do with the Juice World type beats, YouTube will probably look at it like, oh, well, that's content that, that they don't want, so they won't even show it. But yeah, that's that's yeah. actually that's that's just really smart to separate it. Anyone in the chat? Anyone um else heard of that concept or does anyone do that? they would be interested to know about that. Um. Yeah, so man, uh, did you get into like vidIQ or anything like that ever? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've had vidIQ and stuff before, and I, I've, I, you know, I was kind of into the whole thing. Like, what are the specific things of the algorithm I can do to tweak this or what make this more appealing or something? But I mean, as as far as like how everything appears on my channel and like like uh the tags and all that, I've always been doing that myself. Like, still every day to this day. Like I'm typing out every single tag to make sure it's like I have max the maximum amount of tags on there, and so I have vidIQ, but I for real I don't I don't really use it that much. I, I'll use it every now and then to see like what other people are looking up, like uh, similar to what Ant Ant said, which he's a goat for that for real, telling telling everyone all the sauce because I, I know that's what a lot of people are uh, looking for. But yeah, I mean I I use it sometimes to look at like you know what's popping right now as yeah. far as tags and all that. But you know, other other than that, I I really don't use it that much to to be honest. And it's an interesting thing too, man, because like when I first like heard about VetIQ, like I remember like when Taz had like posted it on um like Twitter and stuff, like posted mm -hmm. screenshots about it when he was talking about like you know oh we can rank your beats. Like I remember me and JB were like, yo, this is the sauce. This is like you know <laughs> what I mean, like this is this VetIQ yeah. shit. Like, and we were just thinking like, yo, this is some real like scientific like. You know, where people are really looking at the numbers and doing equations and all that shit. But at all the successful producers I've talked to, it's not really that deep. Like, I think a lot of us that are just getting started finding out about VidIQ, we think it's like some deep shit. It's like, yo, this is like the secrets. Like, this is really, this yeah. is really how you do it. But everyone that I've talked to, they just kind of like, yeah, I use it to look up shit, but it's not really that deep. It's not as deep yeah, as you no, think it is. Yeah, that's the problem with so many people on YouTube is they think there's some secret that we're hiding from and there's really not. Like... That's a, I mean, I get DMs every day, multiple, all saying like, you know, what's the, what's the shortcut? What are you doing that I'm not? And like, bro, like, and then I, I mean, I also get a handful of people that like say like, how do I make like the amount of money you're making with beat stars and stuff? And I, I'll always say the same thing. I'm like, do you, do you love music or do you want money? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like you can't, like everyone can make beats now. Like a little kid next door can go make beats. There's loops everywhere. Fire ass loops everywhere. You know, just put simple drums over it. Someone gonna like that but you can't if you if you just want money if that's your mindset when you're starting like i just want to make money then you're not gonna really make too much noise because it's really about the love of music and that's what's gonna keep you going for real because someone that just wants money is not gonna like obviously it's a grind to to get money and stuff but uh someone that just wants to just to use this to make money is not gonna want to sit down for eight ten hours a day just making beats sending out loops putting packs out you know all that stuff it's a whole right. process and it's all it all starts from like loving music in the first place oh uh, yeah bro and like the way you said you know you, you you're in love with the process you've always been kind of like uh real interested in, in just doing youtube kind of thing not necessarily for the monetization but i think mm -hmm. that's just like you know i can just picture you know what i mean like you know you were probably like what 13 14 when you started this you know probably just a kid it's just like yo this is just fun like i like youtube i like watching yeah. youtube i want to upload i want to get likes i want to get comments I Yo, I can't hear you. Wait, hold up. Oh, there you go. I think I can hear you now. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, what's your on? What's your on? Uh, I don't know why these this alert came up and said that yeah. um all my shit got disconnected. But anyways, um, you know what I mean? Like 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 you said, like you you just it's almost like video games to you or something like that. Like this just another fun thing to do after school. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, I enjoy this type of thing. Yeah, for real. I, I uh yeah, it, it was. It just started off because I've always like loved music and I've loved YouTube and just like, like I used to think like YouTubers who did it for like a living were like the coolest people in the world, and like I, <laughs> there there would be all those things in school of all the teachers like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And everyone was saying some lame ass like, basically <laughs> like, I want to be a lawyer. Like, no, nah, I always say like I want to make music or I want to I want to be a YouTuber. And they were all my teachers were always like, you know, be realistic. I was like, all right, we'll see. Right, right. Yeah. So, so man, what do your what do your parents think? Like, what do you, what did your parents think when you like first like started getting money off this shit? So, I I think I started getting recognition 
uh, like summer 2019. That's when I, I had my first beat take off and which kind of then leveled out all my other beats to get more consistent views. And I got a lot of subs. Yeah. I mean, y'all underestimate how, how good that the algorithm can be in your favor, bro. I remember that week I got 10 K subs in one week. I swear. Off like of the, that, what the lo-fi beat or. Yeah. That lo-fi beat got like hundreds of thousands of views in days. And then that, that then leveled out my, my, my next beats to get more consistent views. Then I got mad subs and all that. But I mean, around that time, you know, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I started making a, 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 a couple hundred bucks off of this, you know, and then I, I, I would save it all to my bank account. Cause I have like a checking account. It's like under like a high school account for a bank account. And I remember, I didn't really tell my parents too much about it. Like, and it's not like I'm trying to hide it from them. I just didn't really tell them about it. And I, I think I remember we were, I was just sitting on like my, like the porch at my house and my dad came out and he was like, why do you have two thousand dollars in your savings account? And I was like, uh-huh. like a dude was about to like interview me, worried about like how I got that money. And I was thought like, you were scamming or something. You on the yeah. dark web? And I, I was, I was like, <laughs> yo, I, I mean, I'm selling beats, and it was all. I mean, I can understand to them how it can be confusing because it seems crazy. And so you know, I just kind of sat down with them. I'm like, look, like I'm starting to sell beats. You know, this is the whole process. You know, if you, that's this is what I'm doing, I guess. And then just I just kept working every day. Like I would get on get home from school you know, and just work, you know, kind of similar to what KBZ said on his interview. He's like, I don't want to, I want to come home from school and make beats for six hours. It's, I, I'm thinking about sitting, in, I'm pretty much sitting in class thinking about 808s. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just right. want to come home. And, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's all really about, and one thing I love that Ant said specifically is how like the simple fact, if you don't want it, enough then that's your fault and like you know like if you if you want it enough then you're gonna go for it because like I would bring my laptop to school even though you're not technically not supposed to and like during my lunch period I would go sit in the library and just like make beats for as long as I could and try and send out emails and send stuff out and like I was just in the back corner of the library you know with my hoodie on just cooking up you know what I mean like oh yeah I was I was making use of any time I got really and so, I mean, now with all this going on, because, I mean, so much has gone gone crazy for me uh, in the past, like, what, like five, six months. So I'm, I'm trying to do, like, online school now so I can really focus on uh, focus on, on both my education and, and uh, beats at the same time. Because, like, as good as this is going, I'm not – I don't want to be on some, like, dropout type shit. Like, that's just – even I feel like no matter how successful someone can be at a young age, like, when you're an adult, you just kind of at least want to say you got a diploma. You know what I mean? So, like yeah. – I'm still, I'm still definitely gonna get the diploma, but that's good. That's yeah. good. That's definitely good, man. Um, shit, man. Um, couple things. So I want to backtrack a little bit. Did anyone buy that? Like, did, were people buying that lo-fi beat? Like, that was on your beat. Oh yeah. Stuff? Oh yeah. I remember when that, like, that week where that where that beat was blowing up. Like, I would get so many sales for that every day. And that uh-huh. was back when uh, I uh, I didn't really know how to have my beats are set up in a good way. Because like you see, I saw you looking at it earlier, like with like the buy buy one or buy two get one free, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're so much better. Here's a tip, like for 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 producers, like I used to have my all my leases cheaper, but instead of having cheaper leases, and it wasn't like some crazy difference, like but but uh like my for example, like my MP3 lease was twenty dollars, and now it's thirty, and I I wasn't like oh shit, I'm getting more views, so I got to raise the prices now because I don't. I don't really get that whole thing. I, I don't. I hate it when I see people get like a little bit of recognition. They're like prices just went up, boys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it goes to their but, head. But no, nah, you're so much better off rather than having like cheap leases than having like them maybe a bit more, but then having the deals like the the buy two get one free because mm-hmm. a lot of yeah. my a lot of the sales I get every day are, are someone someone's like oh shit well I can get a free one or whatever and then it inclines them to buy more and yeah. They, it definitely is a good marketing strategy for beat stars, especially. They're like, shit, I got one in my cart. If I buy one more, I get a whole one for free. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Damn, that that's crazy. Cause that lo fi beat, that just sounds like a regular like chill hop lo fi. Like I know, bro. I'm not <laughs> I'm not I made that beat when I was fourteen, bro. I I still remember the night I made that. Like it's just some basic like it's nothing crazy at all. For did real. anyone did anyone ever rap over it? Yeah, so you know, this is another whole thing, like everyone like i probably have made the most mistakes ever and it's just because of lack of knowledge because i got brought like i was just focusing on the wrong things i guess when i started i just wanted to make music i wasn't focusing on the technical part of producing 
So when I started coming up, I did not know what I was doing, like in terms of like business and, and, and what I knew about like publishing and, and, and mass royalties and all that stuff. So this dude from Vietnam hits me up for that beat. And, and I didn't think he was anything that big, but, uh, so I, I think the beat had like a hundred K views at the time and he, he wanted to buy the exclusive. And I was like, I don't know, bro. Like this beat is kind of like on the come up and I get like lease sales for it all the time. So like, I'm gonna need like a, like I, it, on a situation like that, if a beat is blowing up, obviously it's going to get like sales for leases every day. So I, I'm probably not going to sell the exclusive unless it's a pretty good offer. Cause obviously if you sell the exclusive, that's you can't, you're not selling any more leases. So the dude hits me up and he's like, I'll give you, I'll give you like, like 1200 for it, bro. Like I need this beat. And I was like, like, yo, like that's a lot of money. That was my first time I'd ever seen like at one, in, in one like sitting, seeing that much money. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, because that was like my first big sale. And I still remember, I had surgery like two days before all that happened. So I'm sitting in bed recovering and I was like, yo, like, <laughs> like, like my leg was like, yeah, my, my leg was like propped up <laughs> on yeah. my bed. And I was like, would you break I, your leg? No, like I had this thing in my like, what's it called? There's so many scientific words. Well, it's called like my meniscus or something. I don't. Know. There's like ex, there was like extra tissue that like built up in, it and I could not walk. Oh it was shit! Crazy. So like they had to take it out or something. And so I was up, I was up in my bed recovering, and I was like, yo, I made a rack in bed. Like yo, right, it was right. Crazy. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. So he hit me up for that, and I sold the exclusive when the beat only had a hundred k. You know, sure enough, the beat now it's at like two mil. Right. So, you know, everyone makes mistakes, bro. Like real, real shit. I probably would have, like, if I didn't sell that, I probably would have made like a lot more of leases. But because I mean, it's whatever. But I mean, a mistake is a mistake, and you can't really dwell on it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that was a problem I used to have. I would like, I would worry too much about like, oh, I just did this, when there's truthfully nothing I can do about it, and you just gotta keep going. You gotta like not forget about it, but you can't really keep thinking about it too much. Gotcha. No, I get it, man. Um. Have you? How do you feel? Well, how do you feel about producers paying other YouTube producers to collab to get on their beat stars for splits? And have you ever done that? Uh, to be honest, I've never, I've never done like paid collabs before. I get a lot of people hitting me up for it, but I mean, me personally, I, uh, I'm all about like, I, I'm, I, I feel like I specialize in like my melodies, for example. So like, if I were to ever do a collab, it's usually for like the drums or whatever. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm down to do collabs because at the end of the day, like, and not even on some paid shit, like on, at the end of the day, like, bro, if you're fire and you're fire, like, I don't care how big or small you are. Like if you send me loops and I peep them and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. And then I'm going to use it. You know what I mean? Like it's still, still beats and everything, but I personally, um, for, for YouTube uploads, I don't even really do collabs that month. I say like for collabs and I upload every day, maybe like one, maybe two a month. And that's just out of like me just collabing with someone that I'm cool with or just because I really like the beat that I made. But I mean, I've thought about hopping in that lane before because I know that's definitely a lane for people when they start getting recognition and they start yeah. getting a lot of bread for uh, for for paid collabs. It's definitely smart. I, I So I actually was talking about like you paying other like in, in, in the oh, beginning, you paying other yeah. producers. Yeah, no, nah, I uh, I knew that was a thing. I never did it, though. I know a lot of people that have done it, like they'll pay for a collab so they can... But, uh, you know, as, as cool as it is to see like the name, like prod, like me, X, this person, it's, uh, it's, it, it might get you a couple of lease sales, which is, you know, that's, that's another part. And for someone that's in like my position, for example, that's wanting to help out smaller people, like the, the, the fact that I'm helping like really small producers get like their first few sales, that's dope to me. But in the smaller producers perspective, you know, like after that, like, it's really like, you know, you just gotta be smart with your money. You gotta make sure like, uh. Like this is really worth it. Cause don't get me wrong, collabs can be worth it. Cause that really could get your name out there. You never know. Like, like I know a guy that uh sent this like guitar loop to like this this YouTuber from like Germany that did like Travis Scott type beats, and then their their beat took off and did like five mil. And yeah. so then they both got like 10k just from that beat off of BeatStars, and like then they, you know, they went crazy on that. And so like you never know with on on some luck type stuff with that. But yeah, I mean if you can if you can maybe like percentage out your income per se and like put have some money specifically put aside if you really want to go hard with collabs because you know maybe as a as another producer if you're starting to see this person's name on all these big channels like oh man who's this kid like they must all they must all think 
that that guy's fired. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, it's definitely a good way to get your name out there. I I just I never personally did it. Most definitely, most definitely, man. Um, so what about? I know you have a YouTube where you do tutorials too. Is that just kind of for fun or? Yeah, I kind of I've slowed down on that for sure for a little bit. Uh, that was a uh, <laughs> that was actually the old channel that I used to do like my videos and stuff on when I was like like ten. So I just turned, I deleted all that stuff and then I turned it into like, you know, I might want to do a couple YouTube tutorials, but I kind of wanted to do something different rather than just like how to make a good melody or something. Cause like, that's the most saturated thing you could do. And uh, so I-, I started doing a series that I might keep up. I don't really know though. I haven't really been putting too much time into it, but I started a series called like discord hits where like I would call in an artist through discord and the whole episode or whatever is like, it shows the process first of like me making the beat. And like, you know how you can screen share with people on Discord so they yeah, can see yeah. your screen. So like the first half would be like me making the beat and them watching me or whatever. And the second half would be like them at their home studio, like recording to it. Oh, and, uh, you know, I started that idea like uh, actually kind of a while ago. And everyone's like, bro, you're just copying the Kenny Beat show. It's just on a budget. <laughs> mm. And like, I think I pretty much put up the first episode for that before that. But I mean, I, I, I try to do some creative type shit with like videos and stuff just to make just because it was fun. And I love editing videos and stuff. I've always been into like photography and media and stuff and all that. So right. it's just another lane to try out because it's fun for me. So yeah, I'm always experimenting. Being so young, man, and having the success at an early age, like what I know you you plan on finishing high school. Uh, man, what what are like some of your goals and uh, you know where do you want to take this you know next? Yeah, so I mean to really get on the next level right now, my main goals I'm trying to. I'm trying to be able to do online school mainly just so not only I have more time to work on beats, but, you know, if I get people that are like, yo, like come work with us in Atlanta or like, yo, like if I get even an opportunity to go to LA or for whatever reason, or even if just going on to LA on my own time, uh, you know, I would, school wouldn't really be getting in the way, but I can still be doing it, you know, like on the go. Cause I definitely still want to finish my high school education. That's just, that's just, I feel like that's essential whether you're hella successful or not. And, uh, you know, I wanted to, another one of my goals is I really want to, my, I want to, I'm trying to be like, I'm think I'm going to be like a gold producer by the time I'm like 20. That's kind of one of my goals. I'm really going for that. And, uh, you know, my biggest goal I always had was like, I wanted to make six figures before I graduated and then everything just took off. And I still remember when I started, I, I remember I, I was talking to my like dad about this, like early on. And I was just kind of like, I'm going to make six figures off of this. And he was just kind of like, no, you're not. Like, come on, like, be realistic here. And I mean, here I am. I'm doing it before 2020, pretty much. It's fire, so, man. Yeah, Super man. It's cra- It's really crazy. It's, it's a beautiful thing for real. Do your parents believe in it at this point, or are they kind of still like, eh, maybe you should go to college? Or uh, I think, I think there's they still kind of have college in mind, and like for good reasons though, because like they they kind of think like, you know, you're you're doing good off of this, but you know, you're still 16 and like if everything were to fall off and then all this they're I think they're, they're focusing a lot on like plan B's, you know what I mean? Which there's yeah. nothing wrong with that, but uh, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm really focusing on this right now for yeah. real and like saving my money and everything. So like worst case scenario stuff kind of does fall off or just w- for whatever reason or anything happens, like I still have bread saved up so I can like use my money to make more money type shit. Like for real, those, those episodes you did with uh, like the, the who was, what was his name? Stock, the stock trader. Oh, he, uh, Richard Garcia. Yeah, Richard Garcia. Yeah, yeah. Like, I saw. I remember reading the chat that was they were just so toxic in that stream. Like, bro, we just want to hear about beats, bro. Like, come on, <laughs> and like, bro, like, there's nothing wrong with like maybe trying out something new. Like, bro, like I, I've been interested in all that stuff. Like, I've I've always loved just like business and marketing in general too. Like, just the whole the whole idea of like buying something and then like selling it for hire or or just you know having a product and like the best strategies of getting it to people. It's just, I've always been interested in that stuff too. And I don't see anything wrong with hopping in other lanes with stuff like that. And I remember the whole chat was just like, bro, come on. This is supposed to be for beats. Not <laughs> this, this is producer grind. Stock. This isn't stock grind. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> nah, yeah. But nah, I thought that was, it. That, that episode was important just because like, um, like, you know, especially during quarantine and stuff that, that, that could be like ways that there's, there's people that have like literally started stock trading, never did it before. And now it's like a full-time hustle for them. And 
my whole thing was like, yo, maybe you can use this to fund, you know, being a producer and, and you know, be financially free and be able to put more time into it. You know I mean, um, there was definitely yeah. some people that, that got some got some good out of it, but you're, you're definitely right, man. There was there was some to- toxicity in the in the chat that day. Yeah, I mean, that's the way chats are going to be, bro. Like, that's the, that's yeah. the, it doesn't matter what channel it is. Like, yeah. when I, I do I do streams pretty pretty frequently where I'll just sit down and make like 20 beats in a night. And I'll, I'll stream for like a couple hours. Like I used to do these streams kind of often where I would like, bro, I was on some nocturnal shit, bro. Like I would start, I would start making beats at like 1130 at night. And then I will go until like 7 a.m. just making beats. And it was crazy. And the whole chat is just like, man, the chat's toxic, bro. It's crazy. And like, I remember I was, I was sitting in the waiting room and in this stream just waiting. I remember seeing, I saw a couple people and they're like, come on, bro. This dude is not making six figures. Come on. Like, <laughs> like your beats are fire, bro. But come on. Like you're not making six figures, bro. And I mean, that's, that's dope if you think that, but you know, it's, I think it's just, I think people really underestimate like the bread that can come from this at, at a smaller scale. Like you were saying, like I only have 200,000 plays on BeatStars, which is still a lot, but you know, there's a lot of YouTube producers with less subs than me that have way more. And that's just, that's basically cause they've been doing it even longer than me. But like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's a beat stars like algorithm, but I've never really focused on that either. Mm. I don't know if there's like tags you're supposed to be putting on those to, to blow them up. But like the only reason any of my beats on beat stars have a lot of recognition is just because of like the it beat on YouTube. YouTube. Has, mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Most definitely, man. Cool, man. Let's, uh, let's get some people in here. I know there's uh, some people that sure. definitely want to ask some questions, get some advice. Sure. Um, Let's see what we got, man. We got John Stockman. John Stockman. Hey, hello. Yo, Yo, what's up? John Stockman. I was just wondering, like, how did you uh, solidify the process? Can you uh, you YouTube uh, or mute the YouTube video, bro? Oh, yep, yep. I was just wondering. Um, is it working now? Yes, sir. Man. All right. I, I was just wondering, like, how do you how do you solidify your process? Like, you mean just kind of like gaining structure on like being being confident on what I'm doing, like in the whole process? Or yeah, because I'm like reading these comments. You know, some kids are saying like it takes them like two days to make a beat, and they're like blowing up about how you can do twenty in a night. So like, how'd you get to that point? Oh, I mean, it's really all about what you're comfortable. I'm not like when I say that, I'm not saying like you have to be making 20 beats per night. That's not no, that's probably not good for some people. Like I'm just I've just hit a point where I can really uh, I, I make, you know, I, I make a lot of melodies and stuff. And I just spend what, like six plus hours doing it every 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 night in a stream or something. So like I'm able to make a lot of beats and everyone I see people saying like, well, loops don't count. But like, I, I barely even use loops either. So, I mean. It's all about what you're comfortable with, man. So, like, if you can, if you're more comfortable only making, like, four or five, and, you know, sometimes maybe I, even I'm not doing the, the right thing because, like, lots of times it's really good to put in a lot of time into one beat rather than just banging out quick, quick beats. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're able to, to push out a lot of quick beats, then do it. But if, you, if you're more comfortable slowing it down, then, uh, you know, that's, that's – uh, it's all about what makes you comfortable because it's not good to be really out of your comfort zone with uh with with making with making beats in the whole process pretty much. I've just gotten to a point where I'm comfortable with that, you know what I mean? Fire. I appreciate you, man. Good shit. Is this is this Fetty? <laughs> <laughs> it's a guy on my Discord. I, I recognize the name. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, he left. Oh, damn. <laughs> but yeah no that's that's he's like damn you exposed my identity <laughs> no that's what it's all about though like i think people are like like bro you shouldn't be making like that some people are, are like yo that's crazy how are you making that many or like you shouldn't be making that many that's not it's not good you're gonna burn yourself out but i mean mm-hmm. i haven't really had a problem with it like i can really sit down and make that many beats like there's a lot of like situations where like you definitely want to be putting a lot of time to make sure your quality of your beats is good but I for real think the way the industry is right now, like there are really some points where it's starting to get to where quantity is over quality because there's all these, if you got all these rappers on you, like send me a pack, send me a pack. Like I know a lot of producers do send the same beats, uh, uh, but I mean, still after that, I mean, 
it, lots of times people when they start blowing up to keep up with the demand they really have to be making all these beats and uh i've learned that from a lot of people that have given me advice too just like i mean the the industry is crazy like you hear you hear uh like stuff on like like this new like pop smoke album or the new juice word album or just any big albums right now that are selling a lot like it everything kind of sounds like everything right now you know what i mean so it's all right, about right. connections and it's all about um you know quantity sometimes too and I, I i'm not saying that you should only be focusing on like if i don't make 20 beats today then i'm i'm not gonna do good because look man if you want to start at a slower pace that's dope man like there's nothing wrong with that but i, I feel think like that's what i always say like everything is starting to sound like everything so it's all about connections because i mean there's a lot of this stuff in the industry where it's like i know a kid that can make that on youtube easy that has like 50 subs you know what i mean mm. it's all everyone everyone is getting good at making beats like there's so many good talented people out there like it's crazy hell yeah no, i definitely agree bro let's get um let's get some other people in here man Aze. I'll say what's good. Hey, four hundred and sixty four people in the stream too. That's lit, man. Hit that like button too while you guys are here, man. Please hit that like button. What's going on? Can you hear me? Say, what up, bro? Yes, sir. What's good, bro? My bad, I gotta mute the uh can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, bro. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Hey, man. I just, I've been like following the producer grind. Like I just, I've been producing for like a minute since I was 16 for real. And then I stopped for like seven years, you know what I'm saying? Switched over to IT. Y'all probably hear my kid in the background and all of that stuff. But, um, so I just really started my, uh, my beat channels and it's crazy. Cause I actually started three channels kind of like you were saying how your boy did. Uh, Cause I actually live in Rome, Italy. Um, but oh, right sure. now I'm from, I'm from uh, PG County, Maryland, from the DMV, and um, I started one because over there, like their their hip hop is different. So I kind of want to still like get in the vibe of like doing their hip hop, like Italian hip hop, um, and then also Afro beats is hot over there. But I love like you know Roddy Rich type stuff and everything yeah. like that. So I started three RZ channels, but I kept like the same branding. So I've been switching it up. One thing I'm curious about is. Um, from like the business side of stuff, like you say you want to go gold. And I'm curious, like, because I know that the RIAA, right, they're now calculating YouTube streams as a part of record sales, right? So technically, if you have an IRSC code for a beat that you uploaded that say that a low five beat went 2 million, if you register that IRSC code with Nielsen sound scan, well, technically, will those count towards going gold as a producer is that possible i don't even know if i i didn't even know that you could register that stuff i thought it was mainly like records that you put out but i guess i didn't know youtube stuff can count if that's if that's the truth and i don't know i mean i might have to look into that but if uh if that's what i know they recently started doing that to where youtube uh can count with the record sales and that, that can really be a whole whole different lane that can open up for people so i don't know man yeah because i've been experimenting because i've loaded like i just released the album with 50 songs on uh, TuneCore, all straight instrumentals. The album is called Resurgence, but it's all straight instrumentals, right? Yeah. And um, I took the IRSC code. Obviously, like my channel is is pretty like trash. Like I only had like twelve, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Subscribers and stuff, because uh, I'm just getting started. So I really appreciate you, you know, your story, man. But um, for sure, I was just curious. It. Yeah, I, I was just curious, man, because for real. Like, I wonder if, if you had copyrighted that or whatever, if you have your own IRSC code as a producer. Like, y'all familiar with Jay Dilla, right? Jay Dilla yeah. is a producer, you know what I'm saying? But he produced as an artist. So if YouTube producers like Ant Chamberlain or you have, like, this huge following, why not go the Jay Dilla route, you know what I'm saying, and be your own yeah. artist as a producer and make gold yeah. records? I think I think what I think what you're talking about is possible, bro. But I know that like to go gold, you need like 75 million streams, um, you know, across That's platforms. Yeah, so that'd be a lot. But I mean, if you had like but, if you had like but, 10 million on YouTube and 10 million on Spotify and like 40 on. But here, music. here's the thing, though, right? So TuneCore, the maximum, because I've been testing it out, and like I said, I'm new to this, but 
the maximum album that you can put out is 101 songs on an album. So to your point, you got to get 75 million, right? That'd be but for a single. For an album, I think it's um, I think it's like 1.5 billion or something like that. Yeah, that's that, a lot. Uh, that's I think that might be platinum. That might be platinum. I think it might be like 750 million for an album. Um, correct me if that's I'm wrong lot. in the chat. That's a lot. But anyway, I was just curious with that. You know what I'm saying? But um, definitely, man, 20 beats. So also, I had a question about your process, right? So mm -hmm. I know you said that like you do 20 beats because I've been doing like 10. And yeah. I was curious when you said you said something like you were doing melodies. Do you split time like where you have like drum templates that you've already done and then you just like loop out your own loops or your own melodies and then you just kind of go with that or how do you how do you work within your process what's your uh recording or production process look like yeah so for me uh i i always obviously i start with the melodies i do not know how a, co how a producer could start with making drums first i don't know that's that's not okay <laughs> but uh but uh, no, like uh, for me, I, I click in my melody and stuff. And I, I think a, I don't even realize that I'm doing it when I do it. But a lot of people say that I'd be like clicking in my melodies like really fast. And like I, I'm not even meaning to rush through it. But I, I uh, you know, I, I, I make my melodies, you know, and then I put the drums over it. And then I, I, I uh, arrange it, you know, how I, I how I arrange all my beats. And then, uh, yeah, so it's pretty much just I, I don't I don't usually use loops too often either. So, I mean. Yeah, I'm 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 mainly like clicking in my melodies, which you know can take longer than if I'm just playing it uh, on like a MIDI or something. But I, uh, you know, I just click them in, and I put in the drums, all that, and mix it a little bit, level everything out, and then uh, just kind of arrange it and then put it in folder because I have like a folder for every single every single day, pretty much. And uh, and I I don't want to give off the impression that I'm making 20 beats every single day because you know sometimes yeah nah I know that <laughs> yeah nah, you get not, in that zone and you could just go yeah nah yeah no yeah, like it's it's really it's random like one day I'll make like 26 and then the next day I'll make like six you know what I mean mm -hmm. like it's, it's it's all how you feeling that day how you're feeling that day it's not I don't it's not, I feel like it's not good to try and force it because that's uh yeah. you know that's that's not a smart thing to do that's what's up. Man, hey, definitely. I appreciate all the gems that you give me. I be, I got my sure, notebook bro. here, man. Like, I've been yeah, taking notes and everything, down, man. That's important. And um, I appreciate y'all channel, man. So I ain't gonna hold y'all, man. But um, you know, God bless, man. Keep grinding. You too, man. Appreciate the love, you too, bro. Yep. Let's keep it going, man. Yes, got sir. some good questions today, man. Yeah, for sure. That's dope. The Italian hip hop. I think he could start two separate channels for that easy, bro. If, if it's really that different than each other, than like the basic like Roddy Rich stuff. Yeah, that would definitely probably make sense to do a two channel. I mean, then then that's double the work though. But maybe not double yeah. the work because you really just well, yeah. If you want to up, you want to upload one beat per day on each channel, then yeah, it would definitely be. It's double definitely the work. definitely a lot of work. Uh, James Kent, man. Let's uh. Give him a second. Let's try to get someone else in here. Make sure when you guys are coming in, you uh, connect the audio and get right to it. Yo, what's good? Yo, what's yo, up, what up, bro? bro? How y'all doing? Good, man. How you been, bro? Pretty good, bro. Good, man. Out here working, man. Yeah, man. I was just uh, appreciate y'all answering the call, bro. Oh, yes, sir. Um, For sure. Producer grind dope, man. I'll be up here every day listening while I'm working. Appreciate uh, that, my man. My question is, uh, I've been doing like uh videos where I play, where I like uh play on the on the MPD and uh, MP Mini. I was just wondering on YouTube, like if y'all think like there's like people who want to watch that, want to see that, or if I should keep going hard with it, or so I should just post my beats that I make. Just like it's uh -huh. like a. Are you posting videos of you just like just straight up playing it, or is it like a, a tutorial on like how to do this? No, nah, me just playing it like a like kind of like a music video almost. Like mm -hmm. I edited yeah. it myself and all that. Yeah, I showed Dylan some of them. He's seen them. Yeah, I mean, I think if you can, I mean, people love to see the process behind stuff. So I mean, if you if you're able to show that and you and you enjoy editing it, then why not, man? You know what I mean? Like I yeah, think that's yeah. some, that's something that people could definitely be interested in because like. If you're if you're dope at playing all that stuff, then for sure. I mean, it's it's, it's always good to watch someone at, working at their craft. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 yeah, I started like four months ago. I mean, I'm not crazy dope, but I think I got pretty good talent at it. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, I think I think I think there's definitely a, a lane for those videos. Uh, I know they do really good on like IG because it's like a, a like a little quick yeah. like scroll past and like it catches your attention and watch it type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was thinking because like I, I like like when I watch it back myself, like it's cool for like the first you know like thirty seconds, but after that, like it feels like kind of repetitive, you know. Yeah, I mean, how I've seen a lot of people do it. the long. I I try to keep it like a minute and thirty, no longer. Oh yeah. Really. Yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah. The only reason it would feel repetitive is probably just because, like, if you've edited it and, like, you know what, what's coming, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if that that would be the only reason. Because when I, I used to edit videos a lot more, I would feel the same way when I would try to watch my own because I already knew what was about to happen because I'd seen the shit, like, a yeah. hundred times, you know what I mean? So, yeah. no, nah, if it's just a quick little entertaining video on, like, you playing a song on the piano, that's definitely... I think that's a dope and idea. Like you were saying, you uh, with two different channels, do you think I should keep that on the uh, same channel with me posting my beats or I should make a separate channel for that? I've been posting like on the weekends because I work from seven to six every day. And so on the weekends, I make my video and then at night I make my beats. Now I just post them every day when I make them. I was wondering if I should have two separate channels. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, that kind of depends on like, if you want to incorporate the piano videos into like a, like a bigger process, like, like if you want to start like a, a whole new idea on like you know how I do this or or just even like a series or like any, anything creative honestly if you ever want to end up doing something like that and yeah like I would probably recommend like like uh um you know doing a separate channel especially like let's say like a beat on your beat channel takes off and mm-hmm. a bunch of people are watching it you know maybe want to know how you made it or something and like you can play it play it on the piano or show the whole process with that if you're mainly doing stuff with your MIDI when you're making beats. So yeah, yeah, I only use maybe. Yeah, yeah, it might be, sure, it might bro. be two, it might be two different audiences though. It might be like yeah, know, that's what I was thinking. Because the 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 people that are watching your tight beats are you know artists, but the people that are watching you making the beats are probably mostly producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So it's two, it's two different lanes. You know what I mean? Like like just like Dylan said, like it's artists and producers. So I mean, I think uh, if you're if you're able to put in all the work and be able to stay consistent for both of the channels, then yeah. Cause I mean, if you're yeah. if you're able to appeal to two different lanes and it's working out for both the channels, and that's yeah, it's a wrap, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just kind of started it just to kind of get more eyes on on my beats for sure, for sure, bro. I appreciate the the help. Yes, sir. Bro. Appreciate you tapping in, bro. Yeah, for sure. Ellis, man, what's going on, bro? Yeah, Yo, let sure. me mute the video real quick. Ellis, man. Yo, what's up, guys? Y'all can hear me? Yes, sir. What's going hey, what's on, up, bro? bro? Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, P? Uh, shit. I'm going to be honest, man. I had, As soon as I heard how young this kid is, man, I had just scribbled something down immediately. But uh, the, the one of the questions I had was a music question. It was really about the workflow, and I think that's kind of been spoken on. But if you want to go into it more, you could do yeah, that. For sure. My real question, man, is, uh, you know, you kind of remind me of myself, man, when I was young, you're a little more mentally mature than your peers and whatnot. But uh, at the same time, you know, we all been 16, man. I was wondering, yeah. you know, what do you do to keep yourself in check as far as like, you know, making that much money and having this much, well, not yeah, having clout and, you know, it's keeping yourself disciplined and in track. Like what kind of things are you, you, you do to make sure you're on that track? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I've tried to not like focus on, you know, because I, I do not want to become some dickhead because i have a lot of money i hate that i think a lot of it outside of beats and in beats is really just about being a normal humble person because like i'll have like like in terms of like with beats like all if someone small hits me up and i see them in their fire like i'm not gonna you see so many of these like bigger youtube producers whether they're uh, bigger than me or smaller than me that just like don't respond to dms almost and like look dms can get flooded and i get that but you know they're reading them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I've, I've always tried not to go to Hollywood because I, I don't like that. Cause you know, I've, I've had my people, my, my friends that I've had for, for years that I know that aren't, you know, like leeching. Cause like, I, I personally like now all these, now I don't really tell anyone at, at like school about this a lot. Cause I don't really care if people know or not type shit. But I mean, uh, in the past few months, everyone is starting to hit me up like, yo bro, like, it's crazy you have all this going on for yourself. Like we should hang out and something. It's just kind of like, <laughs> you know, like for like, sure, man. I think it's all about what's up. Go ahead, man. Keep going. I know. I think it's all about staying humble and just staying uh, true to yourself. And just in the sense that, like, like if it, 
it, it's really people will value you as a as a better and higher person if you if you get to know someone and then they're like wow like this person's actually like normal they're not like some prick or like they're, they're not like some like they're not full of themselves you know what i mean like sure. i just try and be chill with everyone like i have like my discord server and i'll just be chilling with people that and they're like yo i love your beats or whatever and i just like i just kind of chill out with them like sometimes that when i'm on my free time like i'll play video games with people that say they fuck with my beats you know what i mean like that's I what's up man that's what i said man I, I fuck with that a lot man but uh Going off that a little bit, man, you're definitely the youngest person I've heard of that's, you know, doing what we love to do and uh, doing it in, uh, you know, the successful way that you're doing it. So, uh, again, we all been 16, man. So uh, what, what would you have to say to the ways that you plan on, you know, growing not, not only as an artist, but as an actual young man, like coming into this type of game? Like what type of tips can you give the, you know, the younger people? Because they're obviously going to be looking up to you a little bit more because, you know, you're in the same age group and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, focusing on yourself is important for real because, uh, pe- I mean, especially in this music shit, people are going to take advantage of you for real. Like, I remember uh, when yep. I was younger, I had, like, in my bio on Instagram, like, 15 years old, you know, like, I'm, I'm – I just – I think I just had it noted that I was 15, and I noticed, like, all these people – try to take advantage of me because they thought like, oh, this kid's dumb because he's he's young, so he doesn't know what he's doing. He just has money or something. And no, I really try to um I really try to sit back and look at the process of everything for real. Because I really I really is uh just seeing different perspectives of like every scenario. I love that. Cause then right. I, it, it kind of helps you be able to see, you know, what like why a certain person is like hitting you up or, you know, whatever, whatever. You I, I mean I feel like the best way to explain it is uh just as growing up you just got to remember to focus on yourself a lot too and just kind of make sure you're trying to better yourself every day if there's any problems or with your not just your personality but just any like unhealthy stuff people underestimate how much um like exercising and working out can really help your craft like absolutely i used to you know i, I mean i'm st- i'm still working on it but you know if you start exercising and getting you know in shape then you feel better you have more energy so then you're able to go harder you know what i mean it's just mental health you know physical health all that stuff you gotta take care of yourself too as much as you're grinding out beats for sure man man he's talking like a 30 year old in here man i love it but hey (laughs) wisdom uh you being young and learning you know you're from your own financial mistakes or or you know uh progress or whatever what's something that you've seen benefits and like putting your money back into as far as your uh your career uh i mean i i'm one to i i save almost everything i i get but uh, I mean, the main things I put my money into, bro. Uh, really, like I have my little, I have like a little studio set up here in my at my house, and you know, I just that that's that's really that's probably the biggest purchase I've made besides like, uh, like like putting my money into stuff is uh pl- like plugins or or packs or, or like like uh like drum kits and stuff. You know, that that's really my only thing I could say like. You know, always, always try to save your money unless you, if you're putting it into your craft and you know that it's going to help you, then for sure, man, go spend it and all, all that shit. You know what I mean? All right, man. Shit, uh, that's all the questions I got, man. Last say real quick, uh, Dylan, for you, man. Uh, most respect to you, man, for starting this platform. You know, uh, every that, every producer that's coming up now, man, has to give you your your props for sure, man. I wouldn't forget about that being yourself. But uh, <laughs> appreciate the love, man, for sure. Yeah, man, for sure. And before I leave out, man, from uh, Columbia, South Carolina, man, P, uh, I'll hit you up on Instagram, man. There's a lot of artists sure. over here that are up and coming. I would love to work with people inside or out, and I'll definitely be sending out your beat, your uh, your link, yeah. your beats website, man, for sure. Yeah, we can network, man. Just hit me up on Instagram. I'll hit you Absolutely. back. Absolutely. For sure. Hey, y'all stay safe, man. Stay healthy. You too, Keep bro. The you too, man. You too, bro. Cool, man. Let's get maybe one or two more in, man. Uh... Jay Grind. Good questions today, man. Yeah, for sure, bro. Yo, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. Bro, what's good? What's going on? First, I would like to say I love what you're doing, bro. Like, like at your age, I was on the same thing. I started my record label at uh, 16. My mother had to uh, start my papers and all that. Um, in my talent show, I had like four acts. <laughs> like I was yeah. deep into it. So <clears throat> now I'm older and just going through life. Like I had like placement opportunities. I had 
records with Sony, all that. It was like in 2005, though, right? Because I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, um, at that age, I'm like really into just doing music. But then, you know, the money wasn't there, you know, because <clears throat> the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and all that stuff wasn't in place. Mm-hmm. So, but now, like, it's YouTube, it's money. Like, I just started uploading my tracks um, a month ago, and I already made eight hundred dollars. You know, like, damn, I'm, good shit. I'm like, yeah, I'm loving it. Like, this is yeah. <laughs> this is my business. Like, I love making like products, packages, and stuff yeah. like that. So, like, I'm not, I'm like a jack of all trades. So it's like, <laughs> I do Photoshop heavy. I program. I like, I literally like make software. And, big back-end software companies but oh, that's, lit. <clears throat> that's a big thing right there from... because you can, right. that's that's a good thing to follow people up with you know what i mean like if if you if you see a customer that's bought like a beat more than once you, you can be like hey bro like i appreciate your support for liking my craft and like uh investing in in, in my beats you know like would you want me to do it? like if you're able to really do all that stuff you know what i mean like like uh, yeah, well, what I do is all that shit. I normally partner with people. I don't. I I, I have this term. I don't slut out my services anymore. Like anything <laughs> that I love, <laughs> I don't give it out to anybody or say, "Hey, you can pay me to do this for you." Like I'm. I, I made so much money doing tech. Like I, I made six figures or more. Like it was one of those things where <clears throat> the money didn't make me happy. It was like I wasn't creating. I wasn't like I'm fixing people's fax machines and computers all day you know yeah, like yeah for but sure. i'm making like almost like like i said seven figures like my company like i made like two hundred fifty thousand dollars when i was like 20 25 26 that's what i was doing a year that's crazy but but i mean business and taxes and all that like it's a lot that you have to learn in order to you know maintain that type of stuff but like if you're not doing what you love, it doesn't matter. Like exactly <laughs> the money, That's... the money is just it sounds good. It's like it's like a beautiful girl. It's like she looks good, but she gonna treat you good. You know, like yeah, yeah, no, that's that's you got that's a really important thing to preach. That's one thing I I wanted to say too. Like long term, bro. Like it's really about if you're happy. Like if you have the option to make like 60, 60 grand a year doing something you love doing versus making like two hundred fifty grand a year doing something that you're just miserable every day then it's you know it's, it's an obvious choice there you know what i mean yeah that that's the truth because the way i made my money was um i used to work for mortuary and they used mm-hmm. to have like they had like four branches right so i'm over like everything like graphic design print department it i was i'm like even my family was going to buy into the company but i wasn't happy you know like yeah <laughs> We had we have a limo company. We have all this stuff, but it was like, where's what's you know what's my next evolution? What what do I yeah. really want to do? Because like I had my daughter, and I was like, well, time to go be safe, you know. Like, mm-hmm. money, the music isn't working. Like, um, I used to record uh, Future before um, he made it big, and um, this is before he was named Future. Like, I was in the studio with him all the time. Like, but. I didn't like the scenario. Like, um, <clears throat> I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I, I just moved to Atlanta, but um, mm-hmm. I used to I used to stay like a couple of blocks around the corner from Ferguson, Missouri, and the police out there are just really bad, right? So, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> the dude that owned the studio used to smoke weed next to a rehab facility, right? <laughs> so that's just it's like all bad, right? So at that point, I stepped out the music and I was like, it's not making me the money. The money's not here. I'm multi-talented. I can go do the tech for somebody. Like the studio, I set it up. I did the logo. I helped build it. But, you know, like all that transitional stuff. But you have to find what you love. Even if you're doing what you love, don't slit out your services. You know, don't go do the money for it. Go and do what you love. Just because I can do covers and i can record engineer all this i was in love with the beats you know what i mean that's <laughs> i like producing i like creating so like you gotta like find that you gotta like hold on to it you can't let people say hey that's whack don't do that no if you had that idea go do it too because you know it's like that one guy uh jj icy fish you ever heard of him of course ice jj fish yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's more successful than anybody. He has more haters in the chat than, <laughs> you know. That's the goat right there, man. What, what you talking about? Yeah. Hey, bro, he's off key. <laughs> he can't dance. But, hey, he's doing what he loves. I follow him. I like every video, you know. Yo, the so chat, the it, chat, and the chat is getting mad at you, brother. Like, bro, get to the question. <laughs> oh, my bad. I'm just congratulating him. I don't have any questions. I, I'll get off. <laughs> now you good, man? Go ahead. You don't got a question, man? We got, we got, we got the young, the young 16 year old, um, six figure producer in here, man. Oh, he did. Did he? Oh, no. He did. Oh, 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 I thought yeah, he took right. offense. No, I was just reading the chat. I already know some shit in the chat. You know? <laughs> but no, um, I don't have any questions. The only thing I want to do is uh, hopefully in the future make a track with you too, grow with you, help you build For your sure, brand. Bro. No, you can DM yeah. me if you if you if you're making beats, bro. I'll send loops. I'll always check them out. You feel me? We can we can work. I'm already on it. I I got something bigger than that. I'm working on a, a beat album collab series. So That's I'm dope. trying to like bust out ten tracks with each producer. But I'm trying to do trap beats but lo-fi with trap beats, you know, so yeah. and just mix it up because, you know, you know, that's my goal. But I, I'll get over here. Whoever wants to get on next. My bad. Appreciate <laughs> you having me on, bro. Thanks, Thanks, so, it up, bro. Appreciate you. Take it easy, man. All right. All right. Later. I hate to be that guy, man, but the chat, I see the chat. I'm like, damn, I got I to gotta say so. I blamed it on you guys, though. Yeah. I blamed it on the chat. Yeah. But nah, but shout out, to, shout out to Jay Grind, though, but man, um. You know what I mean? We we want to make sure we get some good we get some good questions in here. You know what I mean? The chat is savage. Oh my god! <laughs> let's see. Let's oh see. my god! This chat is brutal. Yeah, the chat is brutal. <laughs> they were yes. going in. Damn. No, no, nothing against, bro. It was just you know trying to. I was watching the chat, man. I was watching the viewers drop. The viewers dropped by like fifty. I was like, "Oh man, I gotta, I gotta yeah. save the stream." <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was listening to him. I'll look over the chat. I'll be like, "Oh, uh oh." Joe Wilkins, man. You, Hello? You, can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, bro? Yes, sir, bro? What's up? What's going on, bro? I just want to say it was uh, dope getting to listen to your story, bro. For sure, bro. I love to but, share uh, it. I wanted to ask a question, like, cause I wanted to start building my YouTube too, mm -hmm. and um, like, are you not really like stressed about like people like taking your beat, you know, and not like hitting you back? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I think the thing with that, I think everyone at some point has thought about that and stressed about it, and you know, it sucks because it happens all the time. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure it happens all the time with my beats, and it's that's the thing. Like, it's it's hard to like keep control of every single thing. Cause there's so many people, you know what I mean? There's so many artists on the same beats. It's very hard to keep control of all of it. And uh, it's a, there's a lot of parts on, on YouTube producing. It's kind of a gray area with that. Where I mean, I know a lot of producers that are just kind of like, you know, I, I, there's nothing I can really do about it. So, I mean, if they really steal it and blow up with it, then I'll find it. You know what I mean? All right. I feel you. But okay. yeah, no, I've, I've definitely, I've definitely thought about that a lot. It's a normal thing, bro. Like, I think everyone has thought about that. Like, well, shit, bro. Like, how do I know? if this is really being used properly, you know what I mean? And then okay. another thing to consider too, like, bro, if they put it on Spotify and it gets a thousand plays or they put it on YouTube and it gets a thousand plays, like they really probably made like 11 cents. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like if it starts, yeah, if they start getting a couple hundred thousand views, like, you know, even, even, even like a half a million views on um, Spotify is only about like 17, 50, two grand. Uh, which is, you know, at that point, it's like, all right, you know, maybe I should be getting, you know, especially if you just downloaded this shit and you didn't even pay me for the lease. Um, you know what I mean? then you, But you can always, like, you can file Spotify takedowns. You can do that kind of stuff. But, you know what I mean? If a song is getting views like that, I would just kind of let it chill, see see what it goes to. If that artist ends up getting signed to a label, they got to come back and, uh, you know, um, square that up with you they gotta they gotta handle that that's why you know a lot of people kind of just like okay. you know just kind of chill and just let it let let what whatever happens happens at the worst case scenario you kind of got that as like oh yeah you know some of the artists i've worked with have gotten yeah. half a million views with my beat you know what i mean you can kind of use that as like a selling kind of point you know what i mean exactly. or just like something to yeah, throw into you. your portfolio yeah for okay. sure i understand and um one thing i was gonna actually like what's um 
like what do you think helped you the most like starting your your youtube i know you talked about it earlier just um you know like posting your tight beats and stuff like that first or like trying to do the tutorials mm-hmm. like I what think- should you should I try to start off with just like doing tight beats first? I mean, it, it all depends on like whether you're doing tutorials or tight beats. That's that's mainly up to you whether you what what you want to do more because because you know it's all about you know it's it's all about if it's you're doing what you love. You know what I mean? If you'd rather make a video and edit it and make like you know be yourself on a video and cook up on there, or if you'd rather just put out beats and try and get artists on your beats and do whatever you can, and if that's you, then go for that. But uh, I think the main thing for for tight beats is like obviously like i said the number one thing is always going to be um consistency you know what i mean but same uh, man same for tutorials too exactly okay. yeah it's consistency all around and uh youtube right now with, with tight beats i know that's one thing ant talked about a lot like with what type beats you should be doing or like the titles and everything because that's a obviously a huge a huge part of that um you know, there's a there's a lot of you can either try and go on artists that have already kind of blown up or artists that you think are gonna blow up soon as like a tight beat thing. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, I know Rod Wave was a big one that that came up this yeah. year that everyone started making Rod Wave type beats. So like, definitely. Like, what's the next Rod Wave? You know what I mean? Maybe if if you can if you can get get uh if you can be able to hop on that before it blows up, then you're you're gonna you're gonna get recognition. You know what I mean? Like, if okay. you can be one of the first people to make like a you know, whoever the next the next big person is, if you can be one of the first people to make that, bro, um, you know, that, that, that's big. But at the same time, don't – if you're scouting out artists and stuff, then don't don't start doing all these random, like, unheard of artists at the same time. You know what I mean? Because that can also hurt, too. If Because, like, if people see the title and they're like, man, like, who is this? Like, how am I supposed to know, like, what this sounds like from the title? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think uh, – I think really if you – if you can maybe put out tight beats – that uh, you think uh, are either people that are going to blow up or people already blowing up that you're trying to, you know, kind of come up with them. Because, you know, Rod Wave, everyone knows about Rod Wave. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so a lot of people started hopping on that and, like, Tusi and, like, Roddy Rich and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Okay. Ben, I appreciate it. Thank you. For sure, bro. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you tapping in. Yo, well, I got you guys here in the stream, man. Um, head on over to our Twitch twitch.tv slash producer grind or just go to twitch type in producer grind or go in the description of the youtube video we got a link to join the twitch um we're building that up man we just started yesterday we're at 150 followers on there um tb digital is doing the first twitch stream tonight we're going to be doing battles all kinds of dope uh twitch uh twitch type stuff man so if you go and you follow us now too while we're streaming you also get like a little shout out in this little thing right here you'll get like it'll pop up it'll be like yo such and such just subscribe so head on over and um give us a follow on twitch man we're gonna be doing uh some of the morning show is actually gonna eventually move exclusively over to twitch to uh the call-in shows um we'll always be on youtube for the interviews and uh for a while we'll keep the call-in shows on youtube but we're gonna eventually move on over to twitch for that um so uh so yeah man hey shout out to elvis my guy elvis say that's that's the graphic designer goat man give him a um give him a follow on ig bro if you need if you need graphic designs hit him up man a lot of a lot of a lot of big producer companies go through him for their stuff too samir h1 let's go all right let's get him uh let's get some more people in here um for some q a you got some more time prior yeah for sure i got all day okay bet it up man M. Dasupa, appreciate you guys tapping into the Twitch. There's also a link to join our Telegram too, if you want to link up with us on Telegram. Hey, what's good, bro? Yo, yo, what's going on? Yes, sir. What's up? What's up, man? Doing good, man. How you doing, bro? Hold up, guys. Let me turn this YouTube thing off. Oh yeah. (laughs) All right, fire. We're lit. Hey, uh, I just unplugged my headphones because I thought this was like over. So I was like. (laughs) I was like settling down, but uh, hey, man, I really appreciate you putting me on, Parker. I actually, or Pario, just put your name out there. Um, <laughs> I have, I have a question for you that uh, I haven't heard yet, and I'm actually really interested, and I hopefully the chat will uh, enjoy it. But I wanted to know, um, what is like your biggest goal that scares you the most? Because I personally believe, as like a producer and anyone who's you know a businessman or a businesswoman, like you got to have goals that scare you. So that you have enough drive and enough, you know, yep. push behind it to 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 put you there. So yeah. I wanted to know, like, what that is for you. Yeah, no, for me, for goals, uh, I, I like to set both scary goals and, 
you know, I remember uh, on the Mike Boyd episode, Dylan, like they were talking about how it's good to have goals that you think you could, that you're almost positive you can complete like that month. So you can kind of have an easier way to kind of stay. Oh, yeah, yeah. The micro up. goals, what he does. Yeah, with, so uh, Richie I, I think it's important to do both personally, to have micro goals and, you know, huge goals, like long term, like entire life type goals. You know, I I like to uh, I, I like to to have goals as simple as like, you know, I want to I want to do this this month or I want to do this within this next month or two you know just, just simple stuff but uh as far as like big goals that would be like scary i mean like you know for for big long-term goals my big ones obviously are just like to be able to do this as a living and i i've already been Back. able to sort of do that and i uh you know i i think that and like i said earlier i want to i want to have one of those you know i want to be gold or platinum you know what i mean i want that I want the certification you feel me i i that's, that's a big goal for me like to have a plaque that'd be crazy bro yeah i feel that man yeah i just uh i was just interested man because i feel like um as as someone who uh at least in the chat and like for me like being able to look up to you and and see what you're doing uh, i think you give a lot of insight on how to plan your your future you know what i'm saying like what's your perspective on it and then how can other people apply that so i mean yeah looking for a plaque is huge like i'm still trying to do that myself so yeah no that's, that's every, everybody's trying to do that and it's a uh... It's, it's what it's all about, man. Having normal goals and scary goals. You gotta have every. You gotta dream everything. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, absolutely. And then I have a real. This is my last one. This is. I'm surprised it wasn't asked. Um, but what do you do during like beat blocks and creative ruts? And then how's your process to get out of that? Because I feel like it's different for everyone. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And some people have no clue what to do, so they'll turn to Call of Duty, which I'm talking about me. Um, and so I wanted to know. <laughs> I want to know like at what you know what's your process in that yeah uh i think with that everyone does it different some people just try and literally just work through it some people try and you know take a break i've personally tried both i've only had like one really bad beat block and like i, I know so many producers that say beat block isn't real and it's kind of true it's just it's not like you're not not able to make beats it's just you lots of times it's just the producer getting to them it's like overthinking because that's one thing that i think every producer does is overthink and that's the worst the worst thing you could do uh with overthinking is thinking that you're like the only one that is having these, like, like that you think that everyone does, does it, bro. Like everyone is always worried about something, bro. It's, it's just, we're humans, bro. You know what I mean? But yep. uh, uh, for B box, I either first, I try and just work through it. And sometimes I'll be able to make some, and I'm like, okay, that's, that's fire. But other times if I'm really not able to make anything, I'll just try and, you know, maybe take a break or just watch something else to get inspired. Lots of times when I watch like other people's like, beat making videos or cook up streams or anything I, I can't watch the whole thing without like all right i gotta go make something now right yeah you start itching so, to like jump yeah. into the session and everything yeah exactly. i feel that so all right man that's that's literally all i had i just wanted to jump into those questions but uh you've been killing it really really dope to see you on this for sure so uh appreciate you guys appreciate you for tapping sure, bro. in bro all right man hey man i appreciate all the twitch subs man I don't, I don't know. We, do that. Yeah, we're late to the we're late to the Twitch game, man. You on Twitch? Like stream? You stream on Twitch? Oh, uh, I I stream on YouTube. Although I know Twitch is kind of a better platform for streaming, I already have like a platform on YouTube, and I just kind of want to keep it on here. That's, that's exactly what. I, yeah, that I've was been able to it. network with people a lot better off of YouTube because it's like already got a platform. But can you? I know you can multi-stream, so I might start doing that too. Yeah, you to can. Where, like, it's I real can, easy. Yeah, I might start doing that. It's a uh, realstream.io. We're actually doing it right now. We're we're tweeting. We're oh, streaming. Wait. We're streaming on Twitch and YouTube right now. That's fire. If you're on YouTube, man, hit that like button. If you're on Twitch, keep doing your thing. Uh, Tomeo, you connecting or you sleep? That's uh. Hey, yo, who disliked? Somebody disliked. Oh man, yo, you know it's weird. And we <laughs> had uh, when we had Wilo on, bro. There was like 83 dislikes, but. Wait. After after a day, they all went away. I think there's only like That's maybe crazy. five dislikes now. I don't know what yeah. happened. Like if they were that robots. Crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Wilo's a dope ass producer too, bro. I was listening to his sure. beats on his YouTube. Shit's crazy. Yo, Ken Ken. Gotta unmute. Thank you. <clears throat> no, I don't, I don't even use Zoom like that. My uh, I was just trying to type in that said. I was saying beat paralysis from over analysis. <laughs> yeah. Beat block. But um, I know you're doing beats online. So, uh, and your other outlets 
mine came from actually a, like a live stream, a, like a live streaming app, and I don't even market my beats. Mm. I just li- I literally like, like an idiot, but I started having rappers when I started just making beats. So now I'm moving to the YouTube thing, but what brought me to everybody doing the this uh, format with the leasing? Uh, have you ever considered getting the artists that are actually investing more into themselves and doing like a whole production? What do you mean, like, like, that? like, uh, like tr- turning to artists and like just working on like projects and stuff with them? You mean? Yeah, instead of just like a lease. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, no. Yeah, like I, I always try to, cause you know, I, I get like you know the classic DMs every day where it's like, yo, I made a song on your beat, check this out, and you know, it it gets repetitive, but I really try to check out as many underground and unheard of artists as I can. Cause if I, if I find my few people that I'm like, all right, I want to work with this guy. Then uh, like, I think it's all about really doing everything you can. Cause if you can be sending out loops, you know, to try and get like industry placements, like everyone's doing right now, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. But at the same time, if you, if you have an artist that you know is fire and you can work with them and, and just kind of like, aside from you to be like, Hey, like, bro, like you don't even like have to bring like bread into this. Like, I just want to work with you type shit. Like you just want to make dope music like that that's important bro like i, I have a, a few artists that i really go to 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 just you know send beats and because i know they're fire and they have potential and it's it's all it's all about you know just doing everything because you know if they if they think my beats are fire and i know they're fire and it's aside from youtube and we can make a connection and network you know that's uh gotcha it's, it's important I was just saying because I've been let down by a few artists. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's gonna be a part yeah. of it too. Probably the worst like, part is when when you get let down, like you just said, or or you know when there's so many artists that are like, "Yo, send through, send through," and they keep telling you to send, and then you never make it on the album. It makes you feel like, uh, you know, you're trash or something. You know what I mean? That's what makes you feel like you're not good. But I think it's uh, every artist is picky. You know what I mean? So I try to see it from both sides. You know, like it's probably hard to receive a beat pack of like ten beats and you feel like you have to use one or else like. You know what I mean? So you just gotta try and see it from both sides. You did it from you did it without like the the pressure of it, right? Because I like literally just quit my job, and I don't care if I go broke at this point. Like I'm just doing this 100. percent I had to get that mentality. It's like yeah, uh, no, it's important to have that mentality. I mean, my thing with with like depending on it is like that's why I, I feel, I'm blessed that I was able to start all this as young, so I'm able to just kind of sit back and save it for you know when I when I'm older and stuff, but. I mean, I know, I know so many people that have, that have uh, you know, quit their jobs to do this full time. And I, I love it, man, because, you know, it's, it's what it's all about. It puts you in a whole different mindset when you, when it's all it's when it depends and you completely depend on it for sure. I was one of the ones that lost uh, my job to the coronavirus. <laughs> or, yeah. It was a whole casino that shut down. And I realized that my security wasn't, I didn't have security anymore. You know, like I was like, I could go back because they did open. I just made that decision. I was like, you know what? Mm. I've done like a little bit of money. I've made a little bit of money on the side, and then boy, I know you're getting that cares so check. I, man, I just, I just, I just, somebody just told me about how real those cares checks are, man. Oh, I fuck, I screwed myself over on unemployment too because I decided to try to get a job at FedEx for like two days, and I said, "Screw this." <laughs> and then, yeah, they did. They just cut off my unemployment, so I'm trying to figure that out. But oh shit, I'd say in the worst times, I was like, you know, it's, this is kind of a blessing. I was like, you know what, I can, I know I could do this. And it's really that belief system. So I encourage like everybody that's really trying to do this, especially because there's not, it's not going to be a high percentage that's going to really make it because there's a, it's a ton of work. <laughs> After doing yeah. this for so many years, it is a ton of work just to force yourself. But once you make that decision, it makes decision making faster. Even like speed making sure. beats and everything. So great. But uh, yeah. I appreciate it. I give somebody else the time up here. Yes, sir. This is my first time up here, by the way. Hey, I'll see you guys around. Yeah. Early gang shit, man. Stay, Stay on the ground, bro, for real. All right, y'all. Peace out. All right, man. Let's get uh, let's get one more in, man. Let's see who do we got, man. Let's uh, let's make it count. Let's get a really good question in here. Uh, let's see what what's his name, mate, mate Tyr Let's See what he's talking about. DX said I was watching Dragon Ball Z on a separate screen. Nah, man, I never. I know. I know a lot of the chat's probably gonna be mad at me, bro. I never. I never liked DBZ. Hello. Bro, I, I can't lie to you, me neither. I never yeah. understood why anyone why why anyone liked it. Like when I was a yeah, kid, and, and and it would like Toonami would come on. 
bro, like that and like Gundam and all that shit. I, I, bro, I was not fucking with that shit. I'm like, man, put Ed and Nettie back on, put Courage <laughs> back on, like shit like that. I did not fuck with DBZ. Oh no, the chat's about to, uh oh. And does Dylan no. like any anime? Um, uh oh, the chat, well, yeah, the chat's gonna oh, blow no, me up. Oh no. I never got into anime either, but you know what was lit? Me and my girl watched um Death Note. Death Note was actually fire. I fuck with that. Oh yeah, no, Death Note's fire. I watched that. I watched that. Yeah. Yo, and there was one it? that I so I've only watched two animes in my life. It was Death Note and uh, East of Eden. East of Eden was pretty dope too. Hmm. Yeah, what's good, bro? We can hear you. What's up? Oh sweet. Hey, a little fly in here. <laughs> hey, bro. Wait, it's pretty crazy that you're doing this stuff at that age, as you've already heard from a ton of people. Appreciate um, you, bro. Anyways, man, I'll just get straight into the question. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what like um, producer YouTube channels do you look up to, and do you look at? Because I'm just yeah. wondering, because I'd want to check some out myself. Yeah, to no, see what like sure. inspires you and stuff. Um, I when I started off, I liked watching a, a lot of you know who Mai is. I love I used to love watching his tutorials, and I used to love watching him and. Uh, him and KBZ. I used to love watching. Oh, yeah. Now everyone, now everyone is talking about like me and KBZ are like the same. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I we're, we're the same corny white kids just trying to, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what everyone is comparing us to. Nah, KBZ going crazy, bro. Uh, props to that guy, bro. He's the fact that he's able to like go get a lab with with Weezy and then yeah. get like a placement. It's number one on SoundCloud right now, and now and then he still comes back to YouTube like, "What's up, guys?" You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That. Well, we'll yeah, see. No, the other one you were saying? What'd you say? What was the other person you were saying that you uh, check out? My M I, M A I. Yeah. He 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 makes a lot of like like old like Jay Dilla type beats. He's very. Oh, it's, true. I, I like nice. watching tutorials of of a lot of different genres to just kind of see the workflow mm. of it all, how how everyone does everything. Oh, I see. Mad bro, mad. Uh, that's kind of all I wanted to ask. Eh? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, anyways, bro, I just want to say um super inspired by you know you at your young age doing what you're doing i'm 22 years old you know it's kind of keeping the dream alive to see you know people young like yeah, that doing that sure, sort bro. Of stuff. Any, it's anything's possible bro for real are you a producer <laughs> yeah bro making beats yeah it's it's all part of the process bro just keep grinding just you know just stay stay humble you know what i mean yeah man smart kid for your age bro honestly thank you bro for real, thank you. It's going crazy, man. All right. I'll, I'll All right, mate. See you mate, guys. mate, Tyrakey, man. Take it easy. Yeah, thanks, bro. Peace out, bro. And and for the chat, no, I did not call him mate just because he had an accent. That's literally his, his name here on the Zoom. That's literally his name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but shit, man. Um, man, yeah, appreciate bro. you, bro. Appreciate you uh, telling for us sure, your story, bro. dropping these gems, answering questions for the community, bro. Um. Definitely got to uh, definitely got to link up, man. Especially because you're here in ATL. For so sure, once yeah, no, I think I, I think when I was like mad small, because bro, like I for real appreciate you for doing these episodes, because I have been watching these for a minute, bro. Like when I would be at school, I would have my headphones in listening to producer grind, and I would not, I I can't lie to you, I would not really be focusing on the class. I would kind of you know be thinking about producer. Let's grind. go, man. Yeah. Producer grind is school, man. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. No, I would uh, I for real appreciate you for putting these out, because I think when I was like really small, I think I. I DM'd like the CEO Dylan account, like, yo, y'all are in Atlanta or something. And I, I was oh, like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah, nah, but for real, nah. You, one thing that really stands out about the podcast is you have such a good way of like your questions, bro. Cause I've seen so many interviews where they're like, damn, like these are good questions. Cause like, you know, you, you, there's always obviously the basic questions that everyone wants to hear, you know, the come up story, all that stuff. But you have such a good way to, about follow up questions. And that's really important, really getting in there and getting, getting the questions that everyone wants to hear. So. Appreciate no, you're that, definitely, bro. you definitely goaded for that, for real. Appreciate that, Cause I, it makes me like, like you have like what, like this, like producer ground is what it's like. It's like essential. I feel like to a producer, you know what I mean? Like, I, it makes me think like, damn, like what did they do before producer grind? You feel me? Like, <laughs> nah, that's lit, man. Yeah, not for real. It's it's dope and that you kind of you capitalized and did that. You know what I mean? No, nah, definitely, but I appreciate that, man. It's dope too. Like you've you know seen a bunch of the episodes, and I, I appreciate how you like brought up you know certain like the ant episode and. uh yeah um you know and uh even the richard garcia one and stuff like that is super fire yeah, bro. no i'd be when i that's really my process bro like i, I spend all my all, all my time making beats and working on stuff and if i'm if i'm working on something that i don't need to be like listening to beats for or if i'm just kind of chilling out for a bit you know 
just doing whatever I, I'm watching producer grind to kind of keep me in the right mindset. It's really, it's dope what you're doing for real. Appreciate the love, man. So yeah, man, we'll definitely, we'll definitely be in touch, man. We'll definitely link up and I appreciate for you sure. one more time, man. Yeah, you too, bro. For All real. right. Take it easy, man. You too, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I'm not flexing the merch. I'm just trying to see my game. But I will flex the merch one time. Merch flex. Cool, man. Uh, hey. So, man, we got 409 people in here. Shout out to Perio, man. Make sure you go give him a follow on IG. It's just at P-A-R-Y-O Beats. Um... Check out his YouTube, man. He's got. Uh, he's also got another YouTuber. He's got some tutorials. Yo, we got 297 likes. Let's get up to 300, man. I know there's three people in the chat that could throw us a like real quick, man. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to make you tired or none of that shit. Throw us a like. Also, too, shout out to everyone that subscribed to us on Twitch. I think we went up like 40 or 50 followers during this stream. Um. So, so yeah, head on over and give us a follow on Twitch. TB Digital will be live on there tonight. So, that, that the Twitch stream, like I said, is not just going to be the morning show. It's going to literally be the whole gang. Um, you know, it's going to be dope. All under one roof. Uh, beat battles, morning show, interviews, call-in shows, all that kind of stuff. We're excited to get the Twitch going. I don't know why uh, we're late to the Twitch party. Cat Birdies, man, I appreciate you um, following the Twitch. Anyone else that wants to go? Okay, dope, man. I appreciate the likes, too. 327 likes. Uh, anyone that wants to go and follow the Twitch real quick, get their little shout-out. Yes, sir. Dang, where a DX, man, I appreciate you um, reminding people to throw the likes to it. It reminds me to say it, too. So I definitely appreciate that, man. Please, please continue to, to help me out with that, man. Um, but yeah, man, hop on the Telegram. But some people are saying that the Telegram doesn't work, but uh, I'm seeing some people in there. So it's working for some, but not all. So I'm going to have to check out that link and see what's going on with it. Because I see people are joining as we speak type shit. Um. So yeah, I'll, I'll work on that. Amstrom Music, appreciate you following on Twitch. Let's see where we're at now on Twitch. 173. Okay, Andrew Wireless, appreciate it, man. Twitch going up. So, would you guys um nowadays are you guys more on Twitch or are you more on YouTube as far as just like watching shit? Money Rhythm, appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. I can't join. Hold on, let me see. Let me see if I can drop the link in the chat. I'll drop the the, the Telegram invite link in the chat. Invite, where is the invite? Copy link, okay, cool. So I'm dropping this. Yeah, man, early gang, you can join the early gang too, man, the community. I know a lot of, I think most of the, most of the, most of the real early gang is all already tapped into the, um, text gang. Hey, I appreciate that. Andrew Elias, man. You got to have the app before clicking the link. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you got to have telegram downloaded. You got to have an account. Willis, the kid on SoundCloud is not following. Go check him out on SoundCloud. I hate Twitch with a passion. Why, why do you hate Twitch with a passion? YouTube, but been using Twitch a lot recently. I feel you. Galactic Magic, no problem, bro. So, yeah. um, Man, I got to talk to Leno. I got to see what we got on the schedule for tomorrow. Tomorrow might be a call-in show. Let's get those Twitch views up. Yeah, man, just throw, uh, give us a follow on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash producer. Auto 777, man. Appreciate you tapping in on Twitch. Shout out to our new Twitch family members. I'm in the Telegram. Okay, so cool. So the Telegram link is not working. Yep, I see a whole bunch of people just joined. Um, so yeah, man, let's get the conversation going in Telegram. We can talk about whatever. Um, you could post your beats, get beat reviews from the community. Uh, we could talk about ideas. You can drop ideas in there for uh, shows, interviews, whatever you guys want to do, man. I'm down. But yeah, uh, man, that's all we got today, man. Shout out to Perio. Shout out to the community. And uh, I'll support the Twitch channel as, as well, says Jason. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, so twitchtv.com or not twitch.tv slash producer grind. And like I said, TB, make sure you guys tap in with TB Digital tonight too on uh, Twitch. Uh, he will be going live. Let's see what Leno says. Oh, okay. Yeah, so ooh, we got a dope interview possibly tomorrow. 
So I'll, I will uh, I will alert you guys in the Telegram. I will alert you in uh, text gang. We'll also alert you on Instagram. So shout out to Leno. He just gave me some big news that we potentially got a dope, dope interview tomorrow. But yeah, man. Salute.